Assalamu alaikum sir, can you hear me? Razak sir. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, Dr. Asif Rashid, I can hear you. Thank you very much for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. We see that uh, Professor Dr. Hafiz Muhammad Hassan Fabu, uh, the Honorable Session Chair of this keynote session, has also joined here. Uh, uh, Thank you, Professor Gabjad. Thank you. Sir. Sir, thank you very much, sir. So uh, we would like to uh, start this session shortly before handing over the session to the reporter. Uh, uh, give me a, a minute time. Uh, this is Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Razak, uh, General Chair of uh, STI 2020. I uh, welcome you all uh, to this keynote session to be delivered by uh, Dr. Asif Naimur Rashid, Chief Information Officer of Ruby Asia Limited, Bangladesh. We are also happy to share with you that few minutes back, you were uh, observing uh, a short video containing the list of keynote speakers uh, who have already talked and are going to talk uh, yesterday morning uh, in presence of uh, Professor Dr. A.S.M. Maksud Kamal, uh, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor of uh, Academic of University of Dhaka uh, and many other distinguished guests. Uh, we had our inaugural session and uh, Professor Claudio A. Canizares from University of Waterloo, Pro Professor Vincent Ong from uh, University of British Columbia, uh, Professor Hussein Abbas from University of New South Wales, Professor Raskumar Bhuya from uh, University of Melbourne, uh, Professor Shushmita Mitra from Indian Statistical Institute, and Professor Emiratus Munjur Ahmed from Bragg University, Bangladesh, talked yesterday. And we had already 48 papers presented in different sessions, technical sessions yesterday. So uh, thank you uh, all for joining with us. May I now request the reporter uh, to introduce today's session chair, keynote speaker, and start the session. Thank you very much for joining here. Distinguished uh, keynote speaker, respected session chair, moderator, the valuable authors and participants, assalamu alaikum, and very good morning. I am Wahidud Jaman Shubho, along with Humayun Kobir, are hosting you at this online session. The session code is D2K7, and the session title, 4IR Transformation for Telecom Industry Ecosystem. I am delighted to welcome you all at the keynote session to be delivered by Mr. Asif Naimur Rashid. This session will be chaired by Professor Dr. Hafiz Muhammad Hassan Babu sir, from the University of Dhaka. We have 35 minutes for presentation and around 10 minutes for discussion. You can ask any question if you have uh, during the 10 minutes discussion part. Before uh, ending the 35 minutes presentation, I will uh, give an uh, alarm to remind the ending of the presentation session. May I now hand over the session to Honorable Professor Dr. Hafiz Muhammad Hassan Babu sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I would like to welcome everybody to this uh, international conference on sustainable technology for Industry 4.0. And uh, actually, uh, this is the month, it is the winter season and uh, the ending of the year. And uh, I see. Uh, this is an excellent conference that is uh, organized by the Green University of Bangladesh. And uh, there are many uh, more uh, 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 international experts who have presented their talks or, or uh, many people are waiting to present their talks in this conference. Anyway, uh, uh, in these sessions, we have uh, uh, a, a very brilliant expert, Mr. Asim Naimul Rashid, uh, we get many more good information from him, how the 4 IR transformation for telecom industry ecosystem is happening. Before uh, uh, introducing him, I, I will take a few minutes to, 
say something uh, uh, about this topic. We know that a telecom industry has never uh, been more competitive. Rising infrastructure investments to handle generational changes and the upending of traditional business models has meant that telecommunication firms have to log beyond their core connectivity revenues for profitability. This focus for new lines has led the telcos doubling down on media properties that have become substantial sources of profit uh, to telcos. And uh, uh, the lines between media companies and telcos continue to grow. Telcos need help unlocking their digital assets, transitioning from being voice and data pipes to being substantive digital businesses by leveraging ad tech platforms and digital media brands, among other aspects. Telcos can better leverage, monetize their data for continued success in the current fourth industrial revolution. How the digital transformation is happening, uh, uh, still we have many more questions to resolve. And I think the questions can be as follows. To determine the current impact that the digital transformation has had on the telecommunication industry. To determine the role that digital transformation will play in the future of the telecommunication industry to determine the value that digital transformation is adding on telecom operators, to determine the competitiveness the digital transformation is bringing about in telecommunication industry, and finally, to determine the future digital initiate of digital transformation. I think these portions, uh, 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 we have the actually as being the uh, audience uh, to the Mr. Asif Naimur Roshi, then Asif Naimur Roshi will, uh, will give answers of these questions with many other new features of this digital transformation. Now, I would like to introduce Mr. Asif Naimur Roshi. Mr. Asif Naimur Roshi, uh, uh, he is actually uh, Dr. Asif Naimur Roshi. He is the Chief Information Officer of Robi Exeta, the second largest mobile operator in Bangladesh and a subsidiary of Exeter Group Malaysia. He also has been an additional role being the managing director of the startup Red Dot Digital Limited, a 100% owned subsidiary of Roby. Dr. Asif has been working in the industry for 20 years now. And uh, he successfully leading the key digital transformations initiatives of Roby and Exeter Group. Prior to joining Roby Exeter, he has worked in Telinor Myanmar, Telinor Headquarter, Gramin Phone, Siemens AZ, and Mentors Technology. Dr. Asif has a bachelor's degree with honors in applied physics and electronics from the University of Dhaka, a master's degree in telecommunication engineering from the University of Technology, Sydney, and MBA in executive management from Royal Roads. University of Vancouver, British Columbia, and a doctoral degree on artificial intelligence from California, Southern University, California. Besides, he has attended NAS INSEAD Business School and MIT Sloan School of Management for Advanced Technology, Digital Strategy and Leadership Programs, and regularly speaks at national and international te technology events. In his personal life, Dr. Asif is married and blessed with three children. Now I would like to give the floor to Dr. Asif to present his talk. Uh, Salaam Kum, sir. Uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, uh, am I audible? Uh, very, very fine, very fine. All right, thank you. So, uh, Salaam Alaikum and uh, good day to the uh, elite gathering here today uh, and to all of you who are listening to us online in this uh, winter morning as sir just uh, mentioned so i'm extremely delighted uh, to be among such august group of people you know the uh, other panelists experts 
joining this session from different sectors and giving us an opportunity to have an exciting and knowledge-driven discussion around the fourth industrial revolution that has already arrived in our neighborhood. Now, in my talk, I'll try to be precise and uh, I'll mostly talk about how the telecom industry is grabbing the opportunity of some of the most happening for higher technologies and business models and how the future outlook is unfolding for 4 IR, you know, especially considering 5G and IoT are you know, picking up in scale in many parts of the world. And interestingly, Bangladesh is not you know, behind. We are also seeing that the 5G policies are being chopped out. We are hopeful that next year we will see that 5G license auction takes place and telcos will start rolling out 5G maybe from next year, inshallah. And IoT has already, uh, you know, it has been in practice in uh, operation for the last few years. And we are hopeful that when 5G comes in, IoT will pick up in scale, in, in, in mega scale. That's the expectation when we are talking about, you know, 5G and IoT in the space of or in the context of Bangladesh. Now, just to set the context, I mean, we know the world has started investing heavily around fourth industrial revolution. You know, globally, in the last few years, more than 700 billion US dollar have been invested in areas like, you know, cloud and quantum computing, industrial automation, IoT, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, and mixed reality. These are all four IR components. And for the business world there, you know, who always measures return on investment or ROI, you know, you, you might be pleasantly surprised to know that almost four trillion US dollar value is expected out of just a 40% of the $700 billion investment. That's the huge return on investment in terms of you know, business value. And this is not you know, the pan across or pan industry. It is only in the manufacturing industry. And in terms of time, this would probably take another three to four to reach that level. Now, in terms of readiness to embrace 4 IR, this is still early days. You know, if you look at the you know, global uh, landscape, statistically speaking, we see that only 29% of the global industries today have done a 4 IR project, you know, and 40, 41% have done some sort of pilot projects and they're still discussing 4 IR in their boardrooms. And the rest 30% haven't done anything so far, you know, they're waiting probably you know, to get things more matured and more proven, you know, that's a safe approach being taken by them. Now, telecoms are not far from this ratio. You know, many haven't started talking about 4 IR, or they haven't started to figure out if there's a possible correlation with 4 IR to their existing business models. And the question that typically floats around the management telco, you know, management table in the telcos, you know, they think that is it really important to, you know, to put 4 IR on the priority right now? Can okay, wait. Should we first see that how things shape up for someone else trying it out and then take a step or two? Well, if you ask me that question, I would say that advanced mobile network operators, you know, who wanted to take the first movers advantage in the market, they have already gone quite a long way with 4 IR. They have already deployed many technologies that 4 IR has brought on the table. So there are live ref references across the world of telcos using 4 IR, and I'll be exactly talking about those use cases in my talk. Now, typically, you know, going to a, before going to that uh, phase, you know, typically for an MNO, as Sar was just saying, right, you know, the, the business is getting tougher. You know, the competition is cutthroat. And uh, you can see that every MNO, every mobile network operator who are actually leveraging technology, they would sustain and they are sustaining in the market well, but who are actually taking a backbench approach, they are actually having a difficult time to sustain in the market. You know, their financial indicators, their customer indicators are really not looking good. So this is absolutely becoming a do or die situation for telecom industries as a whole. And this is not only in South Asia or Bangladesh, it's across the world. Now, exactly, there are MNOs who are trying to be a next generation digital service provider. You know, and when they're trying to do that, they always think how consumers' life will be impacted. You know, 
they will always you know first figure out that technologies like cloud iot ai ml you know air vr and so on how these technologies can change you as a consumer your life you know so this is the first problem statement they will put on the table you know and they would always try to solve those problems you know by using uh, the four ir technologies and relying on high bandwidth low latency and massive machine to machine communication through 5g or comparable technologies it can be fiber as well now this tech te you know mnos they spend days and months together first to create a value proposition for their customers you know, you know often by triggering a new type of product or service demand that people haven't experienced yet and then they will seek to they will go to their technology team to get the services baked as cakes now uh, you know uh, once dr asif yes. are you using any ppt uh, no sir i'm just voicing oh, it's, over. It's, it's okay it's okay then it's okay then i was <laughs> thinking that is there any communication problem it's okay continue all right sir right so uh, if, if you're comfortable that was i'm comfortable talking uh, extempore if if that works yeah all right so uh, i was talking about this telecom players you know how they devise uh, digital service plans and how they go to four ir technologies later so i was trying to tell that first in order to use four ir you have to have a business problem in hand you have to have a problem to solve and most of the time for telecom for mobile network operators the problems are around solving a customer need now once these telecom players figure out that there are new opportunities lying ahead of them and you know from where they can earn revenues they start to relate those back to their strategies and ambitions to create products to you know augment their uh, business models you know tweak their sales channels and they offer the services to both individual as well as the you know the b2b and uh, there's one thing that you know all the aspiring and risk taking mnos always try to remember you know that the rise and fall of any business today is strongly determined by the organization's ability to embrace principles like you know build to adapt and build to scale and uh, the the you know the conventional approach the conventional concept to build to last does not apply to mnos anymore and this is more meaningful you know when in particular we talk about industrial 5g and the disruption it can create in the existing business models along with you know of course so many new revenue opportunities created by it now there could be questions that how did this you know front runner first mover at mnos took their four ir journey differently than the others you know how did they storm ahead of the pack well in a very simplified version and you know, i would say that they went ahead of the pack by putting the right digital technologies and business processes in a symbiotic relationship and prioritize innovation and then then they turn this innovation into creating customer propositions that are high on demand and important to note that no telcos in, in fact no industry can do it alone and mnos mobile network operators they also didn't try to do it alone they got into partnerships you know tie ups to develop new business models it's much more inclusive than it actually seems from outside there are many parties who are coming joining hands and developing a four ir business process business model in the mnos most of all you know uh, they always focus on what's next you know capitalizing on new opportunities you know getting uh, ready for the new market trends you know along the way they would satisfy the ever changing customer needs right so with that that introduction i try to set the tone that you know whether four ir is contextual to mnos i believe i could uh, convince you that yes it is very much contextual then i try to talk about that why telcos needs to transform digitally and uh, we know why it's a question of survival and third i try to really tell you that you know when they really talk about technologies do they start with the talk talk with their talks uh, of technology in the beginning that's probably not the case they would always try to solve a problem and technology comes as, in a supporting role now so let's now try to understand that what are mnos doing around for ir i'll give you some specific use cases and uh, i'll try to explain those and if you have questions please ask me at the end so first 
the telecom operators or mobile network operators, you know, uh, who implemented the new technologies, you know, as key competitive differentiator, you know, they actually enjoyed, uh, you know, better uh, advantages over the rest. You know, I would start with a very conventional 4 IR technology. It's called the cloud. Now, MNOs, you know, who are actually trying to leverage cloud, they increase their cloud footprint by significant margin. You know, this helped them manifold. Right away, it gave them capacity elasticity, you know, better operational SLA, opportunity to use cloud analytics, and then optimize their operating cost. Now, all these MNOs, you know, these successful MNOs, they have actually tried to take 30 to 50% of their workloads to cloud. This is massive. And they have not always gone to GCP or AWS or Azure or Oracle. They have sometimes gone to startup clouds. And in some, some cases, like in Bangladesh, where our data needs to reside within the country's border, people are actually deploying hybrid cloud, where the logics are still on the cloud, but the actual data remains within the data center of the telcos. So this huge you know, uh, leverage of cloud has actually given the telcos a huge step forward you know, when uh, they talked about 4 IR deployment in their telcos. Now, in terms of results, you know, what happened when people moved to cloud? What happened when these telcos thought that moving to cloud would give them a huge leverage? These MNOs have been able to reduce their operating cost by, you know, by a margin of 10 to 15%. Their application productivity or efficiency have gone out by 30% you know, for you know, some of the larger telcos. And more interestingly, they have been uh, able to leverage the cloud analytics and offer new services to their customers. Now, the second use case in telecom that is growing in popularity, you know, thanks to the you know, potential voice over LT or Volti and 5G talks, is the data analytics. You know, so how do you really use data analytics? You know, when it comes to significant margin, the telcos relied on cloud, uh, and then the term is called quantum computing. So quantum computing may, you know, you might think that this is very early days for talking about quantum computing or qubits, but in some of the MNOs who are actually taking a first mover advantage, quantum computing has arrived to their neighborhood or to their backyard. These telecoms have started using quantum computing as a huge enabler for 4 IR. you know. They use quantum machines to increase the stability of Volti, you know, for faster site planning and their network optimization activities. Even they're trying to use quantum computing for developing their cyber defense using quantum algorithms. Now let's talk uh, and uh, move to the next use case of 4 IR in telecom. And uh, now this one is, uh, as I talked about it a little bit earlier, this was there for a while, and this is growing in popularity and coverage as well. Yes, I'm talking about uh, the Internet of Things or IoT. Now, successful MNOs took IoT from consumer level to a broader industrial scale. I think that is where the four IR essence come in. It was when it started, it was absolutely for the consumer market. You know, people were, uh, you know, telcos were offering it to the people, individuals. And then they saw an opportunity that IoT can be taken to a larger, grander scale or in the B2B space. Now, using their advantage for SIM cards, you know, their NB-IoT chipsets, the strong IoT backbone or middleware, and of course, with their wire wireless and fiber coverage, they got into long-term partnership with the IoT manufacturers, and they started pitching to the industries, you know, to the B2B, business-to-business -business segments. And why they pitched to the industries? Because if you have seen in the last few years, industries were badly suffering due to the lack of automation. You know, when there was a supply demand deficit, they wanted to really take their production efficiency to the next level. And that was not easy because they were into a business of legacy in terms of technology. So this was the opportunity taken by the telcos. They went there, they saw that industrial IoT can help and create a win-win situation for both MNOs as well as for the industry. So there was a handshake and MNOs provided the enterprise solutions around IoT, and the industry was ready to embrace that. 
Now, the scale of IoT business has given MNOS a very different revenue stream. You know, typically, as uh, we just heard uh, before uh, I started, that you think that telcos are there for voice, data, and typical value-added services. So those are the traditional telco revenue streams. But when telcos jumped into IoT, they completely saw a new revenue stream. And in, in, in terms of potential, we see that there's a prediction of 25 billion IoT connections by the year of 2025. Now, if you assume that by 2025, there would be like 8 billion people in the world, and there are $25 billion uh, billion IoT devices, then that means that there would be three IoT devices per person in the whole world. Can you believe that? So that's the scale I'm talking about. Now, in addition, 75% of all the cars, you know, all transports uh, produced in the world will have a built-in IoT chipset by next year. And these cars will definitely rely on a mobile network operators to make a meaningful use of their built-in IoT sensors. And we're pretty sure that when connected car comes, they would obviously need a seamless, high bandwidth, low latency mobile network operator when those cars fly on our roads. Now, Eminos focused both on B2C and B2B IoT test cases, I told you, right? Some of the examples I would like to you know, pitch on the uh, to you, like smart vehicle tra tracking, smart surveillance, you know, healthcare, smart home, smart motion detector. These are the typical services that MNOs would bring to B2C, to consumers, to individually all of you. But for B2B, the approach for, from MNOs was typically towards building a solutions for maybe the smart agriculture, you know, smart industry, smart transportation, smart office, and so on. So this is how it differs when it comes to approaching individual segments with individual IoT use cases. The third in, you know, use case of 4IR <clears throat> that telcos are using today are actually the art use of artificial intelligence and machine learning. You know. Now, AI is already tapped by the experts to create around you know, $13 trillion value in the world economy by 2030. And everyone is trying to patent their own inventions around AI, including telcos. If you go to US, you will find that every week, every month, telcos are patenting their artificial intelligence solutions, you know, uh, just to be secure. And the global AI market for telecom is expected to reach to around uh, $9 billion by the year 2027. Now, if you're comparing a compound, you know, annual growth rate, a CAGR, this is like 38% if you compare from 2020 to 2027. This is as disruptive as 4IR can get for the telecom industry. Now, some of the you know, MNO use cases around AI ML, you know, when telcos use AI ML, they don't only create value for themselves, they create value for the customers as well. Like, like you know, personalizing consumer offer through supervised learning. Telcos use supervised learning to try to create patterns, a knowledge uh, database to understand you know, the consumer behavior, what products are more in uh, uh, you know, demand and what products they should take out of the market. And they use supervised learning to create um, you know, a machine learning model to offer to individual consumers the product that they would most likely be you know, interested in. Then we can go to the fully automated service offering ecosystem, you know, self-service channels. MNOs are trying to use AIML to create a zero touch self-service consumer channels. The third one is very interesting. It's about, you know, handling network and system faults. You know, it's impossible to really deal with the petabytes of data coming in every day in the, from the network and then trying to fix a fault looking at that data you know, by, by a human, it's humanly impossible. So you have to have some sort of logic built in there. Now, typically, telcos would be building strong logics, you know, the typical if then else uh, algorithms to try to find, detect a fault and then solve it. But after 4G came in and the data, uh, you know, growth has been disproportionately higher, it was also uh, proving to be impossible. So MNOs looked at AIML, they found that artificial intelligence can be used 
to more e efficiently detect the network faults, the system faults. And in some cases, these MNOs are also using AIML to put up a remediation, you know, to uh, resolve the system fault as well. Now, another very interesting use of AIML in telcos is data analytics, leading to data monetization. Telcos are trying to use data analytics, trying to make you know, important profile out of it, and then coming into B2B business deals with other co companies and entities to monetize those data much better. Another interesting part of using AI ML in MNOs is using AI in the front channels, you know, like AI bots. So you typically interact with voice bots, chat bots, and in many cases, those voice bots or chat bots actually have an AI model just built in, you know, at the back end. So this, the list goes on, but this is how telcos are relying, you know, more on AI ML and trying to leverage this 4 I R technology more and more. The next, uh, you know, use case in MNOs about 4 I R has to be robotics. So typically, when we talk about robotics in 4 I R, we do talk about, you know, the hardware-based robotics as well. But interestingly, in my talk, I will try to, uh, you know, tell you about a different sort of robotics, what we call robotics process automation or RPA. Now, going by the essence of 4 I R, the MNOs are trying to industrialize RPA heavily. You know, on an average, MNOs see 15 to 30% increase in productivity and annual cost reduction of, of maybe a few million dollars to tens of million dollars just by leveraging the right RPA use case. And RPA works in both ways, you know. You can, uh, you can uh, probably Google and find vendors like Blue Prism, you know, UiPath, Automation Anywhere. So there are many vendors who are providing RPA solutions to the MNOs. And MNOs are using RPA both in the foreground, you know, for stuff like repetitive, rule-based, you know, low exception jobs. But these days, MNOs are also using RPA clubbed with artificial intelligence for heavy backend duties as well. Now, I already hinted earlier, you know, what value 5G and the massive fiberization bring on the table for telecom industry. And you, you should make no mistake, 5G and massive fiberization to me are complete 4 IR enablers. They don't always be talked, uh, you know, they're not talked as, as much as in others, but 5G and massive fiberizations are very instrumental enablers of 4 IR for the telecom industry, you know. And, and this is, you know, going to be huge, uh, you know, when, when, when it comes to operationalizing 5G for all the use cases that we talk about. And if you're looking for a dollar value, it is coined to create almost $3 trillion business value in just next three years. And this is according to GSMA. Now, the biggest 4 IR beneficiary of 5G is going to be the manufacturing industry, the communication and entertainment industry, you know, the wholesale and retail industry, and a bunch of public services. You know, they will all... Uh, Professor Hassan Babu, can you hear him? No. <clears throat> Me too, no. Uh, I think no, he's... Ah, okay. Uh, he he has some difficulty. Okay, let us wait. Frozen in the winter. <laughs> It's not so cold yet. Uh, it's very cold in Japan. Uh, uh, maybe outside temperature is minus. Uh, no, almost uh, today is a little bit better. Uh, maybe outside two, three, or four, five, something like this. Okay. Almost the same. Always you need to wear too many clothes. <laughs> okay. Well, let me contact him.
Interesting thing is that he could not understand that he has been disconnected. Uh, uh, he is uh, reconnecting and will talk to us first and then we'll start. Professor his... Radhya, yeah. can you contact with him by mobile? Uh, yes, over the uh, phone I have already contacted and he is reconnecting. Problem of calco, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. We do have problem everywhere. I mean, it's not only in Bangladesh. I mean, even in Japan and yesterday we found that uh, uh, Professor Abbas uh, from Yes, Australia. from Australia. He, yeah, yeah. He, he said apology yeah, to us. Even it is happening in USA uh, as well, the, in Florida. Yesterday I was in... ICCIT, there, there was a talk and they, uh, they were talking about this problem. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because of huge demand, so. Our next speaker is already here, uh, Dr. Muhammad Munirul Islam. So it's Uh, Dr. Asif, we can hear you now. Oh my God! So my, uh, I'm extremely sorry. My Wi-Fi got, uh, I don't know, something happened. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, have to yeah. speak to my phone. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. So la last 30 seconds, uh, but we could not hear you. So you can continue from there. Okay. And we have sure, time sir. limitation only. We do have uh, four or five minutes. So uh, if you finish uh, okay. your time, that would be good. Sure. Time. Sure. So I think I was talking about RPA and uh, you could hear me on that, right? So. Yeah, you may continue from there. Yes, continue from there. Okay, great. Right, so as I was telling that uh, robotics process automation is growing in popularity uh, in telcos. And we are seeing that by the use of robotics process automation, telcos can gain up to 15 to 35%, you know, increment in their product productivity. And they can actually save millions of dollars of uh, OPEX by leveraging the right RPA use case. Right, so I think, um, um, let me just jump uh, into, I was talking about, I was trying to touch base blockchain use. Uh, uh, and uh, what I'm seeing is basically, globally, blockchain is getting into a huge popularity when it comes to telcos as well. And this is mainly because in telcos, there are many processes which actually re depend on middle parties. You know, there are broker-based services, but blockchain's primary concept is peer-to-peer. -peer. So this is how many of the telcos are actually using the Hyperledger framework today, and they're actually developing so uh, solutions around do not disturb, mobile number portability, roaming settlement, fraud detection, AI ops, and smart contracts in their supply chain management. And the industry predicts that blockchain in mobile network operators industry is going to generate 700 million US dollar market by 2025. 
And I'm sure a lot of MNOs are doing a lot of pilot projects on blockchain today as we speak. So another very quickly and interesting uh, four IR use case in telcos is the use of ARVR. You know, you probably know that the gaming industry is booming up. You know, online gaming in this pandemic has boomed as, as anything. And the experts' opinion is that it is going to generate revenue in the space, you know, in the, in the size of one to 1.5 trillion US dollar in the next five years. So this is the massive opportunity that telcos are seeing. And you'll find a lot of telcos, they are developing their solutions on air, VR, or mixed reality and developing games by their own or by, through partnerships and coming big in the market. All right. So few of the few of the words I think I should really touch is that you know when all these MNOs are trying to jump on the four IR ship, you know how they are doing things differently. They are constantly working to upskill their workforce. You know the fear of being left out, fear of being redundant to new technologies, is always working in the people's mind who are working in the telcos, and they are actively working to grab new skills in the market and embrace the fail fast approach. They would fail ob obviously, but they will come back from the failures fast and they will jump to the next initiative. You know, they're also bringing cultural changes in the organizations. This is important to remain agile in the face of transitions and the digital transformations that we are seeing coming our ways. So overall, I think going forward, I believe it will not be an option, but a total obligation for all telecom players to depend on 4IR and build their business models around the best use of these 4IR technologies we just discussed. And the journey, as I just described, has pretty much started for MNOs. And it's, this is only going to get bigger and bigger as we move ahead. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Asif. Uh, we had a very nice presentation here and we uh, got many uh, new features, new points, and uh, we, we got that how the new technologies you are adapting with the uh, telecom. So now we have the, uh, I think, uh, question session. Uh, the uh, dear audience, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask him. Uh, may I ask? Yeah, Professor Atik, you can ask. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Asif. So you mentioned Sorry. that, uh, Alikum Islam, you mentioned that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you have to have a business problem and to solve a customer need. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, by attending different conferences all over Bangladesh and different project shows in Bangladesh, if you uh, get time, I request you to do those so as well. You will find that many young researchers, they have been exploring on different, different models to solve our genuine need, customer uh, problems and so on, but they cannot move further because they graduate or uh, university, we cannot give the infrastructure and something. So uh, mm, uh, what about, I mean, uh, Ruby, uh, make some plan to uh, promote startups in Bangladesh so that they can move forward. You got my point that, I mean, how can you motivate those and uh, just uh, groom them? Uh, this is very important, I think. We have extremely brilliant kids all over Bangladesh, but we need support. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I think we, first of all, uh, let me uh, start by saying that I fully agree with you that uh, and uh, even globally, you can see that it's not possible for telcos to come up with all the brilliant ideas by themselves. This would be a wrong approach if telcos think that is the way. And people are actually giving away to the cloud, you know, the crowd concept, you know, the crowd is out there and some of the crowds can have much better ideas. But when it comes to Robi Asiata, I can assure you that we have a platform where we collect ideas from ideation to you know creating a pilot and to even launch a product there is a process that we follow we call it our venture our venture is a process where we have done our venture 1.0 we have done what 2.0 and brilliant ideas as you rightly said brilliant ideas came out from the from the from the crowd from the people uh, in the market and some of the ideas got even selected in global platform for seed funding or you know angel investment. So we have a platform and uh, the platform is called Venture. but you are absolutely right that uh, there's enough opportunity to take this flat platform even uh, in a larger scale to all the part of the uh, of the country where their ideas are uh, booming in. 
I'll take a note of that and I'll see what um, what best we can do. But it has to be done in a consortium. Maybe we'll have to go to get into partnership with other telcos and do it in a larger scale. Only then the benefit will come to the people. Uh, but we take we take a point of that. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any more questions? Uh, if you allow me, then I can ask another one. Like, yeah, yeah. like uh, we know that uh, many policymakers in Bangladesh, uh, from the government and outsides, we always talk about AI, robotics, uh, machine learning, deep learning, blockchain, this kind of words. You also mentioned, but I know that you are very much expert on that. So my point is that from the policymakers uh, and uh, the reality of Bangladesh, uh, are we genuinely going through uh, those processes and exploring those issues? or we just uh, consider too much from outside uh, almost cooked materials like fast food and then exploring those in our country, in our industries. Just give us some, I mean, carefully, you, you can give the answer, I know. Yeah. But whatever you can say, please. Right. So I think, I think, I think you're, you're right. And when I talk with uh, the policymakers and we exchange our in, uh, opinions in webinars, what we discuss and we discuss very openly, I'll have to thank uh, to Bangladesh government and uh, of course to all the panelists who uh, participate from government side that they really lis listen to us when we talk. So mm -hmm. you're right that on policies, we, uh, you know, if you're talking about a structured process of creating a formula to adapt new technologies in Bangladesh, we are of course uh, uh, not there, number one. And all the policymakers, they admit it, but if you ask me that whether their jobs are in a work in progress, if they're doing anything or they're absolutely sitting nothing, of course, there are enough work being put into this. So when we talk to A2I, when we talk to ICT ministry, when we talk to the other uh, you know, uh, cabinets, we see that there's a huge work being done. The paperwork is almost done. And some of the paperworks are already published in some of the government websites as well. Unfortunately, we don't really go and see it there, but there's enough detailed work done even in the 2018 ICT policy that I read through myself, there are enough uh, guidance there, but the handshaking of the policies with the industry to take it to the next level, you're absolutely right, that has not started yet. And if we can't do that, people will do take these technologies on their own, on an ad hoc mechanism, and they will never get the best out of it. So this is where we, we also try to talk um, um, uh, and try to convince that we need to have partnerships where government, industry, educationists, students, and like-minded technology should come and try to take it to the next level. But this has started in Bangladesh. And I'm, I'm hopeful, I think, by that in, a, you know, in next year or you know, in a couple of years' time, we will find a much more structured approach towards any technology that I talked about, you know, be it blockchain, AI, you know, mixed reality. Any technology that I talked about, in a couple of years' time, we will have a much better approach to each of them with a clear business vision in mind, because you, you, we cannot do things for charity. We have to do it with a clear ambition, objective in mind. Otherwise people lose motivations. So in a couple of years time, th things will be much better as things are much better today compared to 2015 or 16. So this would be uh, my, uh, my, my two, two cents on this. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Dr. Amotaharul Islam, just raised his hand. Okay, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Asif for your nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Am I audible? Your voice is... I can hear you. Yeah. You can hear me, right? Okay, so I have uh, some observation. For example, I am uh, supervising some of my team uh, for, uh, for the AS computing or recently some thesis for, based on NB-IoT, narrowband IoT. So yep. uh, during the supervision, the problem I have faced that for example, we need to develop a model, okay, right. as a thesis outcome. But the problem is, you see, uh, if we consider as, as you are working with cloud computing, definitely you are also working with AS computing because right. of the latency issue. Okay, so right. my question is, uh, can you give us some idea that our young student, for example, they can use some I mean, resources in your base station as the AS device, okay, uh, maybe it is pay as you go manner. So, do you have any service? For example, we are using telco uh -huh. in Bangladesh for voice communication only, and now it is in data communication. So, what about other services? Is right. it available? 
Right. There's, there's so I think, sir, so, uh, first of all, uh, yeah, the, the, the problem statement that you have uh, just mentioned is an excellent uh, problem statement, edge computing, because you're, you're, you're rightly saying that when you go to open RAN next year, when the RAN is opening up and the big vendors are giving away to the small vendors, of course, edge computing and edge, um, edge-based processing would be the next thing to go, uh, do. So what we can do, I mean, uh, it's very good and encouraging to hear that you are trying to do a project around that. Um, uh, we probably cannot give you access to our live edge network because it's mostly the, you know, for 4G, we call it uh, the node B. Uh, and of course, uh, for 5G, it has a different name. But uh, I can talk to the network team to see if there's a trial or there's a you know, proof of concept environment where you can get access and try to apply your logics that you're building. Uh, shall we take it offline? Uh, you can uh, reach out to me and we can see how we can help each other. Not a problem. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Asit. Actually, uh, as the time is running out, so we need to end this yeah. session. Sure, and, sir. Uh, I think before concluding the sessions, uh, I uh, just would like to say that we have learned many things uh, from your presentations. You have presented how the new technologies are uh, 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 adapted with the telecom or telcos. And uh, there are many uh, new technologies. You talk here the uh, 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 artificial intelligence, robotics, and uh, many other yeah. new uh, uh, items. Uh, but I think, uh, though these technologies we are adapting, still uh, there are many challenges that you people yeah. are facing in the industry. And especially uh, uh, nowadays, we are quoting one important word that the data is the new oil. And this data, yeah. how we are handling in this uh, telecom or telcos, that is a big issue actually, especially when right. data is coming from the third party. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we hope, uh, uh, especially Mr. Atik, Dr. Professor Dr. Atik, who, who, who actually uh, 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 told us that uh, how the uh, fourth industrial revolution in the telcos is happening in Bangladesh, it is very important because uh, I think Bangladesh government is taking many more initiatives, but uh, actually those initiatives uh, should be should be uh, uh, realizing in, in, the, in, the, in the practical field. Otherwise, yeah. we, we are making the plan, but we are not implementing. That is not actually uh, 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 helping the uh, telcos uh, uh, make go backwards. So thank yeah. you for your nice presentations. I hope uh, that the people who attended in this conference, they get uh, uh, many new features, new points, new knowledges from your presentation. And uh, we hope that you will work for Bangladesh. You will, uh, 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 you are working in the second largest uh, mobile operator company in Bangladesh and uh, Bangladesh will lead in this sector with the Inshallah. core IA. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Salaamu alaikum. Salaam. Professor Rabzak, is there anything to uh, report? Your, report your will declare soon, sir. Yes. Thank you, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Asif Namur Rashid, for your uh, nice talk to our uh, uh, keynote session. May I now request our session chair, Professor Dr. Hafiz Muhammad Hassan Babu, sir, to confer uh, e certificate to our uh, keynote uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Asif Namur Rashid. Yeah. I am sharing uh, the screen. Yeah. Thank you, Asif. Thank you, sir. It's an honor receiving it from you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, may I now request to our uh, session moderator, Professor Dr. Munirul Islam, sir, uh, to confer a certificate of appreciation to our session chair, Professor Dr. Hafiz Muhammad Hassan Babu, sir, and I want him to put some short comments to our about our session. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the honorable speaker, Dr. Asif Naimur Rashid, Chief Information Officer. Provi Exeter Limited for his nice discussion and spending his valuable time with us. I also would like to thank 
all the participants of this session. Now I would like to request the reporter for showing the e-certificate for the honorable session chair, Dr. Professor Hafiz Mohammad Hassan Babu. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Professor Mohammad Islam, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rajak. And, uh, so thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your nice time. To organize for a very uh, prestigious conference in Bangladesh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. The leadership to lead sir. this country. Sir, and thank you. To add up the fourth industrial revolution in this country. Thank you very much, sir. I am also very happy to share with you that uh, this session is being attended by Honorable Vice Chancellor of the University of Bangladesh, Professor Dr. Uh, Golam Samdani Fokir, Dr. Julius Hussain from Germany, Dr. Ali Akbar Dewan from Canada, uh, Professor Atikur Rahman Ahad from Japan, and many other distinguished uh, guests and learned uh, professors. Thank you very much, sir, for your nice time uh, here. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Sir. Thank so, you, sir. Uh, before the end of our session, may I request all the participants to turn on your uh, camera so that our volunteers can take a snapshot of the moment of this session. Please, everyone. Okay. You may ask that Dr. Asib Rashid, where is he? Dr. Asif, if... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This is a choice. Sorry, I was reading Okay. As if come closer to the frame, you are looking too tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.